Um, yeah, this is a little something that was missed last week. Um, so when you guys do your layout and you have kind of a rough version of a model, especially when it's instance, there's multiple, multiple copies, um, you know, you want to replace this with something a little more intricate, a little more detailed. Um, so the, the sort of girders I built here were very, very low res. This one I built with, uh, if I go down here, can I see the poly cylinder? This one actually has 48 uh, subdivisions. Oops. So there's more edges. I deleted half of it. I then did some extrusions and stuff. I should have counted out a little better, actually. Probably should have gone with like 50. Would have been a good number so I could get a nice even number of extrusions here. But this is just kind of a quick example to show uh, the difference between, you know, kind of a blocky, low, low res version and something that's maybe a little more refined. Um, so when you want to swap these things out, let me just, uh, I'm going to hide this thing. Hide selection. So um, ideally, you know, when you're replacing objects, they should have the same pivot. So this thing was basically built the same way as the other object. Now you can take your existing low res blocked version, duplicate it, right? Move it off. You could do a smooth version if you wanted to, so you could work with it in smoothing and try to get, you know, sharper edges. This looks a little rough because it's super low res and it's uh, starting. So when it smooths, it kind of takes on this kind of blobbier version. But uh, what I did is, like, like I said, I just kind of restarted with uh, more subdivisions, more mesh. Um, and again, you want to be careful about these. You don't, you don't necessarily want to have a ton of mesh for replacement parts, especially if there's going to be dozens or hundreds of them. Um, but this thing is instance, at least it should be. So if I grab any part, right, it, it, they all kind of update, which is kind of a nice feature with instancing. But when I want to replace them, what you generally want to do is grab all your instances. Um, by the way, naming is a good idea. I should be naming my objects as I go. So uh, instead of this thing being, uh, what is it called here, P-Cylinder 27, I should probably call it, um, um, yeah, I'll call it uh, Station Arch. And give it a little underscore so it'll be easy to read. You can see it updates actually over here. On the um, on the on the uh, outliner, so once it makes uh, it becomes duplicated, it'll be easy and, and easy to read, nice to look at. So let's slide this thing over. I want to get it kind of roughly in position. So everything seems to line up. If I grab this, I'm going to grab all these. Uh, so I'll grab my kind of set of uh, clones first. Shift click last on the on the replacement so I can go to modify replace objects so it's uh, modify replace objects and I always go to the option box so in the option box we can copy a trip uh, we can copy rotation scale I'm gonna make this an instance since this is an instance and I'm gonna just hit apply now <laughs> you guys can see there's a little bit of an issue there right um, so when I did my replacement let me just undo. This thing when it was created was actually sitting um, sort of face up. So you see there's a rotation of, of 90 degrees there. Uh, also the translation might be throwing things off. So what you can do is go to modify, modify freeze transforms. And you see that kind of negates or takes out the translation and rotation data. So now if I grab my instances, grab the, again, important step your replacement object is the last object you grab I'm gonna just hit apply to see what happens there we go so again they're shifting positions so I'm gonna have to uh, let me undo this actually for, for a second yeah I should generally speaking you want to kind of line up your first object and then do the freeze so I'm gonna go back to modify freeze there we go so I'll select all those cylinders again then grab the replacement and hit apply. <laughs> of course, it wants to uh, jump. Just make sure my positions are okay here. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I mean, the pivot should be matching the object that's sitting underneath it, but 
for some reason it wants to kind of jump in space. Now what I might do uh, with the, the new object, I'm just going to delete the history. That can help as well because I don't really need the history to carry over either. Uh, in this case, yeah, I think if it's going to shift, I'm going to do something else here. Let's just apply this. Yeah. So I'll just manually, you know, move this back into position. Yes. The rotation, yeah. It's actually, uh, the, so the fix for the rotation changes to freeze transforms. Um, so that should work. Let me just uh, unhide all here. Display, and I'll do uh, unhide all. all so there we go now um, if you notice too so this is how we would go from kind of our blocking to our new um, sort of updated version of the scene so you just basically select any old instances you have and then uh, go to you know select your new version and go to replace uh, replace objects which is under modify replace objects well, I just want to show you uh, maybe another example here of um, yeah, let me just, uh, I guess, save this thing. I'll just cre kind of create another example. Uh, so let's say we want, like, dining table and chairs. Let's do a very, very simple version of this. So uh, this works kind of, you know, in a lot of ways. So this, again, one of the important things, you know, these things are created kind of center of the world. Um, so if I duplicate this, or I should actually kind of instance this. So let me go to edits. Duplicate special, make sure they're on instance. Move these off about 20 units. So let's say we've got a row of chairs or whatever. Th it could be anything. And let's say we take a few and move them, kind of rotate them, offset them. Well, if I've got a new version of that object, which uh, I think I did 5 by 5 by 5 yeah. Let's go to face. Uh, let's see. So I'm just going to kind of quickly make a really rough chair here. So I'm going to do extrude faces, do a little offset, turn off keep faces. So there we go. Offset like that. There we go. That's good. Delete that. Delete the bottom. <coughs> Uh, take all the vertices across the very bottom edge. Yeah, let's delete these faces. Take the verts across the bottom, scale them flat. Now I'll double click this and uh, I want to, there we go, switch the scale center from object, which is kind of looking at the overall object's default pivot point. Uh, and you can switch to default or manipulator. Either one of these will work, so it'll kind of jump to the center of where those vertices are, so that way I can scale them flat against each other. Nice and easy. Uh, let's go to edge mode. Multi-cut, hold control. I'll cut this thing in here. Uh, yeah, that should work. Actually, before I do that, so I'm going to take all the faces. Uh, yeah, make sure that's out of there. Take all the faces, so I'm going to hit Control shift a and do a little extrude faces on local Z. Again, this is just kind of a rough uh, sort of chair that I'm doing here. And let's do multi-cut, go to face, and do an extrusion there as well. Okay. So, we've got all these instance uh, copies, right? So what's great about the instances is you could just kind of work on one and do the same edit. That would apply to all of them. Uh, but in this case, I'll grab all the uh, instances and then grab the, the updated version that I want to swap out. So this is, again, how you would uh, swap out your mesh in your scenes. Go to replace objects, and they should all replace, even taking on the orientation of the other objects, right? So it's a really kind of useful, powerful way to, um, you know, s quickly swap out the, the rough block version of your mesh with the refined props that you're building in the props class, right?